Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's lesson we are going to be looking at how we can fix these 3D models and make them more realistic inside of stable diffusion. So before we start I'm just going to show you a before and after and then we'll get into how we can achieve that result. So over here we have uh, we have Miss Pixel Face and <laughs> Her friend over here and they are going to the stable diffusion salon and this is the result that we are going to be trying to achieve so I think we can all agree that um, the stable diffusion salon did a pretty good job and it definitely looks a lot better than this which is kind of like blocky and flat Whereas the result that we have here looks a lot more natural and satisfying. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into it. So today we're going to be using stable diffusion to achieve our desired effect on top of our models. The first thing you're going to need to do is basically load up your stable diffusion. If you haven't got stable diffusion I have a few tutorials on how to install it it's a little bit tricky but if you follow them it's uh, pretty easy so in today's lesson we are going to be using the cyber realistic uh, model so it's been trained on this one you can download it at civet ai it's this cyber realistic model just come here download it and if you're not sure what to do then i'll just go through it quickly you can just go to your stable diffusion directory go to models and stable diffusion and you can just pop it inside over here so you have this cyber realistic over here there's quite a few different models on the site that will do the same trick you don't really have to download this exact one but in today's lesson this is the one that I will be using okay so the first thing we need to do is we need to go to image to image because we are going to be working with a base image and we are going to be altering the base image so once you are in image to image we are going to go and find our image that we want to use So over here we have our base image loaded. Now we're going to drop down and just change a few small settings. To start off with, we're going to just uh, move our sampling steps up to 40. And we're going to be using the sampling method that we have EULA A over here as the standard, which is fine. We are going to be using these sizes of 700 pixels by 700 pixels this is just your sample area that it's going to be using so if we're working on her face it's going to make a square of 700 by 700 that it's going to be sampling around so that is fine batch count i think we can have four images so we have a choice of which ones we want to use and over here we can leave the scale at seven but the denoising strength we're going to drop down so essentially the lower the value the less it's going to change and the higher the value is the more it's going to change so i think we can just drop this to something low like 0 0.35 okay that's looking good and we can just check over here now that we have uh, actually i made a small mistake over here we need to click on image to image and then go to in paint okay and then drop our image inside of here it's essentially the same thing and our settings stayed the same one more thing that we are going to change over here is the in paint area which we are not going to be using the whole picture but only the masked area so we are going to be using the masked area so now what we are going to do is we are just going to scroll to the right hand side and we are going to draw over her face so this is essentially a mask that we are going to be drawing over her face 
and that's going to basically indicate the area that we want to affect. Okay. That's looking pretty good. And now we just need to give it a simple description. So this woman is a Caucasian woman. So we can just go. Caucasian woman. Face and then also negative prompts. Negative prompts are just certain things that you don't want to see in your image. So for example, distorted, long neck, so just a few things that basically keep the AI in line. Okay, so we're just going to do a last check just to double check that everything is the same. Yeah, that's looking good. We can maybe just add a few more sampling steps into there. And now we are going to generate and see what that gives us. Okay, so the generation has completed and now we can have a look at the results that we have. Yeah, they're looking pretty good. So if you're happy with those, essentially all the images that you've generated get saved in this folder over here. So you can click and go and import them into Photoshop or if you'd like to generate more or play around with the text you can say that brunette, dark hair or anything that you're interested in changing you can play around and perhaps add more to the batch count get more variations it's up to you as you can see inside of these images, if you increase your mask, it will also affect the clothing of the person. So this lady is looking good. The images are saved inside of this folder. And now what we're going to do is we're going to erase that mask and we're going to do exactly the same thing, but for this one over here. And we're going to click generate one more time. Okay, so the second one has finished as well. And as you can see, they are also looking pretty, pretty good. So once that's done, you just click on this folder, go inside your folder and collect your saved images, jump into Photoshop like we have over here bring them into your layers and then all you need to do is just mask out essentially the old one and it's as simple as that guys so if you enjoyed that if that did help you please consider subscribing to the channel and i'll see you in the next lesson